Your back pain, shoulder pain and neck pain are all coming from your leg length difference. Sounds plausible, right? But does a leg length difference really matter? And how big does the leg length difference need to be to really play a role? Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. In our daily practice, we come across a plethora of patients who blame their leg length discrepancy for their knee, hip, or low back, shoulder, and neck pain. Many of them were informed about the leg length difference by their general practitioner, specialist, or physiotherapist. This can create a worrisome attitude and fear that their situation might lead to poor alignment of the pelvis, spine, and even higher up in the body. My first question to patients is usually, how was this leg length difference measured? A study from Fisk and Bajent back in the year 1975 has shown that clinical assessment of leg length discrepancy is unreliable and that true discrepancy can only be measured reliably by x-ray. Yet, still almost 50 years later, physiotherapists and other professionals are telling their patients that they have a leg length difference after they have measured it or after they have performed the Weber Barstow maneuver, for example. Then I will continue to ask my patients, out of 100 people, how many people do you think have a leg length discrepancy? A review by Knudsen et al. in the year 2005 estimates that around 90% of the population have a leg length discrepancy. Of those 90%, almost 60% have a leg length difference of 5 mm or more. Now, let's say that a patient has had an X-ray confirming a clear leg length discrepancy. Can this have an influence on his or her ankles, knees, hips and back, etc.? First of all, the aforementioned review showed that the effects of an anatomic leg length difference is rotation of the pelvis, often referred to as pelvic torsion. In most cases, the innominate bone rotates anteriorly on the side of the shorter leg and posteriorly on the side of the longer leg in patients with a leg length discrepancy of up to 22 mm. But is this pelvic torsion related to low back pain? The evidence from different studies included in this review shows that neither pelvic torsion nor pelvic unleveling or pelvic obligity are related to low back pain. So now we have only one question left to be answered. When does a leg length discrepancy really play a role? In other words, when is it clinically significant? There are quite a few studies that have tried to answer this question. For more details, we would like to refer you to the review of Knudsen, which you can find as a free download in the description down below. In conclusion, the result of taking different papers into account is that a leg length difference of up to 2 cm is probably not clinically significant. The human body is perfectly able to compensate for this difference, mostly through passive structural changes such as mild scoliosis, facet angulation or changes in muscle length. Only past the 2 cm point, active muscular compensation takes over. At last, it's important to realize that a discrepancy of this size is only found in around 1 out of 1,000 people. So, in case someone has a leg length difference of more than 2 cm, how is this treated? What we often hear and also see on social media is that practitioners try to reverse the pelvic torsion by a manipulation of the sacroiliac joint. My first question about this procedure would be, why would you want to change the pelvic torsion in the first place? If the pelvis is equalized, I would expect other structures to have to take over the job and to compensate even more, for example, the facets or muscles. Second of all, we have learned that a manipulation of the SI joint is never able to change the position of the innominate bones on the sacrum. If you would like to learn more about this, Check out our video on SIJ myth busting by a click on the info button in the top right corner. The only treatment that does make sense and that can be of value are he lifts in order to compensate the discrepancy. 
So in case you find a leg length difference of two centimeters or more, it makes sense to possibly refer this patient to a podiatrist. All right, first of all, thanks a lot for watching. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. If you like myth-busting videos, check out our video on SIJ myth-busting right next to me. As always, this was Kai for PhysioTutors, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.